what happened to the social psychologist Amy Cuddy and her work on power poses and what happened to her at Harvard is to me amazing. I'd heard about the power stance and I'd heard some general ideas about it. It seems as though it's a reasonable idea and a reasonable hypothesis and a reasonable finding. Embodied emotion, embodied cognition. There's just no question that that happens. The concept is virtually a truism. She has the audacity to go do a TED talk. It was brilliant. She got her finding out to lots and lots of people. She's a good speaker. So it went big. I think the most watched TED Talk. It's hard to imagine that that did not engender some resentment, in part because she's a scientist who is presenting her work directly to the public. I would imagine that there's an intersection with her being a woman. But her work was, in fact, published. It was absolutely right. published. She did this work in 2010. Uh, her paper was published. She had the TED Talk, huge, huge success. And then people attempted to replicate her work. And the replicators... An on this paper, I would say it was inordinate. But again, this group, yeah. Data Colata, they took her methods and, and tried to replicate her work, but they could not reproduce her findings. Aaron, that happens all the time. And in social psychology, that would be the rule. Somebody wrote a blog of saying... It's just their opinion. Dear mom, I think this was wrong. And this somehow trumps her having written something in a peer-reviewed journal. People who watched Amy Cuddy's TED Talk know that when she was 19, she had this severe auto accident, and one of her critics suggested that her inferior work might have been a result of her early head trauma. Well, he's just an asshole. Amy Cuddy is a cautionary tale. It's a horrible tale. It's a very distressing story. We essentially lost this very talented woman from social psychology. She had to leave Harvard. Her life was too hellish for her to go on. She did not want to go on. You're saying she was bullied out of academia, Harvard, science. It, it looks that way. And the thing that, uh, that I wish for above all else is an increase in civility and directness. Obviously, when you sit in front of your little screen, you have a sense that you are alone. Of course, you're correct. I mean, you, you're not going to sense the reality of the person next to you. Go to a meeting and talk and argue. That's not going to it happen. It's going to happen. We do. We go to meetings all the time. I just came from a delightful hey, meeting. How many tweets did you send out today? I mean, it doesn't even matter. I mean, the, the number of people who you will reach with your tweets compared to the number of people who you will meet at any bunch of meetings, it's not even close. It's just not going to happen. It's not the world we live in. Now you're depressing me. Okay, so what's your answer? I am in 100% agreement with you. Be nice. Well, we all want to be, be nice. oh, kinder and like George H.W. Bush says, right? We, we want a kinder and gentler world. But when we're there, we want to remember when we're typing that there's an actual human being on the other side of the screen. A lot of us, before we send out our posts, we spell check them. So maybe we should maybe we should nice check our posts. Nice check. I love that. That's a great right, message. Right, right. Let's all nice, nice check, check we'll ourselves. Check, check if we're engaging our better angels. Let's all nice check ourselves. Great one.